So what is an MS attack? What's a pseudo attack? And what are the risks of taking high dose steroids? Don't turn away because I'm going to be answering your questions starting right now. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video, I'm going to be answering your questions about MS attacks and steroid use. So let's jump in. Our first question comes from E, who asks, what do you think about steroid treatment for sensory only relapses? Excellent question, E. When you have an attack, a flare, an exacerbation, a relapse, it's all the same thing. It's when there's a focal bout of inflammation, which is affecting the holiest of holies, the supercomputer that runs the body, the brain, or the superhighway, the spinal cord that takes the information from the brain to the body and back up. And that focal area of inflammation is short circuiting part of your nervous system. I've heard some old school neurologists say things like, well, heck, if it's only a sensory attack, it's not that bad and we don't need to use steroids, which I think is kind of BS. It really has a lot more to do with the degree of impact that it has on the human being. For example, if you're having trouble feeling your hand, that's a very serious problem and it might make it hard for you to get through your activities of daily living, brush your teeth, write something, etc. If you have numbness of your foot, in my mind, that's a fall risk. And so as opposed to saying no to treating uh, sensory only relapses, I think instead it's a conversation with your neurologist. Now, I err on the side of treating any attack that impacts the patient negatively. I'm going to be offering steroids as long as we're considering the proper risk benefit. In fact, when I see an MRI that shows a new contrast enhancing lesion and the patient is asymptomatic, I still offer steroids. Why? Because both a sensory relapse and an asymptomatic enhancing lesion on the brain is evidence of focal inflammation, inflammation in places where I don't want you to have it. And I know that giving steroids quells that inflammation. An attack can cause damage, permanent brain damage, and I don't want that for you. The punchline to the question is, I think it's dependent on the individual and I'm gonna err on the side of treating. Thanks for asking. Our next question comes from Snacks5000, cool name, who writes, can you explain the science behind pseudo exacerbations and the long-term risks of solumedrol treatments? So let's tackle both those questions. As I shared in the last question, when you have an MS attack, flare, exacerbation, relapse, that's when there's a new bout of focal inflammation in the brain or spinal cord, short-circuiting part of your nervous system and causing new neurological deficits. So if there was an attack in the optic nerve, you're not gonna see very well and it's gonna hurt like the Dickens when you move your eye. Pseudo is the Greek word for similar to, but it ain't. And a pseudo attack is not a fake event. It's not not real, it's very, very real it's just not caused by new inflammation. It's caused by old neurological injury coming back out, oftentimes in the setting of elevated core body temperature. So let me explain. If you had an optic neuritis back in the day, and fortunately it recovered and you regained vision, the optic nerve is now no longer operating at 100%. Let's say it's operating at like 90%. If you have a fever because you have a urinary tract infection or you have a bronchitis or what have you, your core body temperature is raised and it causes that damaged optic nerve to short circuit. Now, the human being can't tell, oh, this is a pseudo attack. All they know is, gosh, I can't see. And we clarify whether it's an attack versus pseudo attack in part by taking a history. If someone has the reemergence of loss of vision in the setting of an infection, that's more likely to be a pseudo exacerbation. This is actually very relevant because we don't treat a pseudo attack with steroids the way that we would with a normal attack. We find an infection and then we treat with antibiotics, for example. There are patients experience symptoms and then it's my hope that you bring that to the attention of your neurologist and in communication with your neurologist, examination, and then doing lab testing, like a urinalysis, we can oftentimes sort out attack versus pseudo attack. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. 
And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Thank you. Now let's tackle the second question. What are the long-term effects of solumedrol? First of all, solumedrol is a steroid. And oftentimes when people are exposed to steroids, their low doses often taken orally for a long period of time. This might be seen in the setting of asthma or lupus or a myriad of other things. When we give super high doses of solumedrol for a very short period of time to treat an MS attack, it's kind of almost like a different drug and the side effect profile can be somewhat different. So let's focus in on the use of high dose steroids for MS. The things we wanna watch for are worsening of diabetes, the rare, rare instance of psychosis, or God forbid, a GI bleed. Those are the big significant things that we wanna be cautious of. So if you have a history of GI bleed and the MS neurologist needs to give you steroids, that's a conversation. I oftentimes will put someone on very high doses of stomach protectors. And of course we caution patients, God forbid you have bleeding from down below or jet black stools, that's a stop in going to the emergency department. If you have a history of diabetes, we have to take precautions before we give you steroids. So we're gonna to need to put you on a sliding scale insulin and maybe work with your uh, endocrinologist or your primary care, or in some cases actually admit you in the hospital so that we can observe your uh, sugar levels very carefully during the steroids. Very, very rarely you can have psychosis with steroids. To be honest, I don't think I've seen that in the last 10 years. But if you have a history of psychosis, we certainly want to know about that. Now, there are a host of other less severe but very unpleasant symptoms associated with high-dose steroids. Chief amongst them is insomnia. So steroids are very, very activating, and it can make it super hard to sleep, which is yucky. And when you take steroids like that for three or five days, that's a lot of missed sleep. And so sometimes we have to use a sleep agent to help someone fall asleep at night. We also try to give the steroid in the morning in hopes that that might help a little bit. Steroids can make you irritable. In fact, I have some patients that kind of get a rage when they take steroids and we have to take precautions. I have some families where they will literally have uh, the person getting steroids stay in a different part of the house just so that they're not antagonistic. Steroids can make you super hungry and yet it can make food taste bad. And it can make you retain water weight, which you'll pee out the next week. Steroids are not a benign treatment. Um, I sometimes refer to them as a necessary evil. Now, I also wanna talk about bone health. People impacted by MS over the age of 50, boys and girls, have a risk of an accelerated bone loss. And that can lead to necrosis of the femoral head, which is really bad, or pathologic fractures. We need to be checking bone DEXA scans in people over the age of 50 with MS, by the way. And we want people to be taking extra calcium, etc. If you take steroids, that can risk causing an accelerated thinning of the bones. Again, steroids are a necessary evil. And so if we have to give more than one course of steroid a year, I'm on high alert to make sure that I'm not impacting the bones. The bottom line is when we see an MS attack, we need to treat it, or at least that's my opinion. But everything is a risk benefit and high dose steroids is no exception. Excellent questions, Snacks5000. The most impactful thing that you could do to help this channel grow is to watch another video. So if you wanna up your game, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning vid or my next monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.